Hello and welcome to Earth Calling. We're your hosts, Ed and Laszlo. Every week we bring you a fresh slice of online content, sorting through the likes, the memes, the Insta queens, the swipes, the scrolls, and the Twitter trolls. Together, we're laying down our 21st century digital legacy. So sit back, relax, and buckle in. This is Earth Calling. Welcome back, Earth Callers, to this new episode of our podcast, which we have decided to dedicate to a legacy item of the internet. And by legacy, I mean it is now older than many of the other things we've been talking about in recent episodes. And that is, of course, the modern day letter writing tool, email. Mm, the electronic mail. The electronic mail. And Ed, I guess we just scoot right over to Silicon Valley for this next part. <laughs> well, so interestingly, actually, for the founding story, it's not entirely clear as to where electronic mail came about, or email mm. as it's known in common parlance. <laughs> mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what I can share is a little origin story, which I've pulled from Wikipedia. It's quite dry, so bear with me. It's also quite technical. But essentially, computer-based mail and messaging became possible with the advent of time-sharing computers in the early 1980s? 60s. And informal, Fuck. yeah, <laughs> and informal me methods of using shared files to pass messages were soon expanded into the first mail systems. Over time, a complex web of gateways and routing systems linked many of them. Many U.S. universities, for example, were part of ARPANET, which sounds like a evil Bond villain. Yeah, the ARPANET. So um, the first ARPANET network email was sent in 1971, and that introduced the new familiar address syntax with the at symbol. Imagine a world where actually the at didn't exist. Must have been very odd, I suppose, where you just write a letter. Frightening. Yeah. Frightening, yeah, yeah. You just write a snail mail. <laughs> Am I right? Snail mail? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's slow. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, I, it's, I you thought snail it. mail was when you, yeah. when you enclosed a little crustacean into your oh. package. No. No. Mm. So for a time in the late 1980s and the early 1990s, it seemed likely that either a proprietary commercial system or the X.400 email system, part of the Government Open Systems Interconnection Profile, i.e. gossip, would predominate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I speak for most Earth callers out there when I say that you lost me at Gateways. And Gateways was, I think, said in the first sentence of your little backing, your, your little backstory. But... It sounds very technical. Mm, exactly. How about you just? How about you cut through that camembert and just tell us exactly? <laughs> Don't just... ask me to explain it for God's sake. <laughs> All I thought was interesting was that it actually spells gossip. Oh my God! What a drama! Gossip. I, I also love the idea that you've probably got all of these American agencies, or in fact, it probably happens across all of the English-speaking world, where they want to try and force an acronym. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. they call something, you know, star because they think star sounds cool. It sounds but then cool. They, yeah. they can't actually piece together the words. It's, and it's, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's almost you, you come up with a cool name and then think, bloody hell, how are we going to yeah, fill all these letters with, the with English that. words? Yeah. I mean, God, these people. I, is it just me? Like <laughs> AIBU? Very <laughs> good. A, yeah. yeah. Harking back to the. The Mums Net episode, you know, I'm just interweaving our episodes, getting our listeners to, to, to listen to previous content. A little breadcrumb, you might say, rather like Hansel und Gretel and the yeah. wonderful uh, folkloric yeah. tale of Hansel und Gretel. Oh, Hansel, I taught my little breadcrumb. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever will pick it up for me. Ah, oh, don't worry, Gretel. It will show us the way back to the wherever they got lost from. What was he called? Yeah. Uh, was it not Grindelwald? That's the Harry Potter bloke. Who... Brothers Grimm. Ah, the Brothers. Brothers... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah, Grindelwald did not write any children's stories. No. Thank God. One thing, though, that I did learn from this Wikipedia article was that there was some confusion around the origin of the term email because originally fax was referred to as electronic mail. And you can forgive them for calling it that. It was, of course, Fa electronic facsimile. snail mail. It was a facsimile, correct? And I do, you know, remember a time 
of fax existing. It was a thing, and you would fax mm-hmm. it to a phone number, wouldn't you, basically? And then it would sort of go in like... Yeah. Quite, quite creepy, actually. So, you know, you're sitting there with your fax machine, and then mm. all of a sudden you get a... You get a yeah. It's, it's kind of quite weird, and you didn't ask for that. And that was, of course, the evolution of things like telex where you just be able to send or like the telegram where you just send a couple of things like laszlo is dead stop lol stop <laughs> mum stop which is of course oh, lots second. of love I not not, a... lo- oh, not... Yes. Lots... <laughs> <laughs> yeah or, or maybe lol is loss of laszlo in that case. oh very nice so i guess that is the bare bones of the founding story. Thank you very much for the bare bones, which I would say were not very bare, actually, and quite flesh, full of or lots of confu- confusing flesh. But nevertheless, thank you. I, I just want to go back to those early days when, you know, as a 13-year-old little boy, I was really excited to start creating my own email address because it was like, mm. you know, this is my this is my messaging platform. I get all my messages from friends here. And as with a lot of things as a 13-year-old, you kind of want to sound cool right mm. so i don't know there about you go. but i bloody hell i, <laughs> I really yeah. yeah it was your well it was your it was your window to the world laszlo so you <laughs> exactly i was is my portal so i don't know about you but i went through a, a bit of a cringe phase of creating lots of different email addresses and i've tried to write down the highlights from my creation phase um there was uh old zal c mirando at hotmail.com wait what sorry rewind yeah, this is hard to explain this one. So, Olzal is my name backwards. Oh, and God. then... Uh, <laughs> and then Mirando means, like, looking in Spanish. And then C is also is backwards. So, it's basically like, Laszlo is looking at Hotmail.com. <sighs> but wait, you haven't heard the worst of it. So, I got sick of Olzal C. Mirando quite, you know quite clunky and a bit hard to, you know, scribble down on a piece of paper when you're giving it to that really hot other 13-year-old who you definitely never, ever met. Mm. And I followed it up thinking, you know, actually, I need a bit of a a bit of a brand change here, you know. So the final attempt I made to, to really sound like a kind of a cool guy on, on my email handle was the very tropical email address Caribbean Fantasy at Oh my God. What? And um, that makes you sound like some sort of strange, I don't know, either timeshare scam holiday or some porn star. <laughs> Why don't you come on over and I'll be your Caribbean fantasy? Well, it's much more innocent than that, actually, and a bit embarrassing. Uh, so I, look, I'll i get this bit out of the way quickly. I, I used to go on family holidays to the Caribbean, and there's a, there's a non-alcoholic cocktail there called the Caribbean fantasy, which is kind of a slushy juice drink. Mm, to me, and it's, I, I it's was a, a sort big... of Curacao... Is that, is, is that Curacao, Curacao country? Is, yeah, that's not a... You no, know, it's, it's, it's an, a Venezuelan island, which is in the Caribbean, yeah, I think. So, sorry, I, what am I looking for? Am I looking for... Um, <laughs> there is a... You tell me, I have no there, idea what you're looking is for Is there right not now. a liquor that sounds like Curacao? No. C- oh, c- c- oh, okay. Carib- yeah. C- Kalua. Kalua, no. Damn it, Kalua. okay, fine. I, I, I was trying to concoct this Caribbean fantasy, but perhaps it's a... It's, it's like a slush puppy, basically, isn't it? With it's a slush puppy. Blue, maybe there's some WKD in there, but it's not very tropical. That it's a bit sort of Manchester. It's not really very Caribbean. No, the the, the Caribbean fantasy I knew and loved was uh, more of a kind of rich, creamy oh, colour. It, it was Bailey's it was based, of, perhaps. Let's say. Well, I mean, I was twelve, so it wasn't Bailey's based. It was it was uh, very much a fruit fruit based, it was a fruit and water based. There was a mocktail, but the, you know the funny thing is, or the annoying thing is that. I created this email address and I was like, that is the one. Like this, you know, this makes me sound like an absolute legend. And then I realized after a quick Google or maybe Ask Jeeves back in those days, I realized that I'd, I'd misspelled Caribbean. Oh. I spelled it with, with I spelled it with two R's and one B, which is a, an absolute nightmare. Is it a double so B, Caribbean? I, yeah, one R, two B. Caribbean. Yeah. So, so again, the, the king's speech is it's, it's, it's yeah. Caribbean. Yeah, it's a b- 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 bit hard to get out. Slubber the bees. Uh, <laughs> so, 
So naturally, me thought naturally me thought me had to go back and to to, to rename my email address. Oh, have you like become that? some kind of cliched pirate on Tortuga in the Pirates of the Caribbean? I I'm trying to do a, a Caribbean accent, an Antiguan accent. I, I that thing is Jack Sparrow. Yeah, my name is Jack Sparrow. No, well you and I come. Oh, yeah. No, of course, my name is not. You're the scary yeah. woman who Jack Sparrow goes to see, I think. That's it, Calypso, yes. Is sir. that what she's called, Calypso? Yeah, not to be yeah, confused yeah. with yeah. Curacao. Yeah. yeah, not to be confused at or all. Or Kahlua. So anyway, me thought me <laughs> needed to make that change. Now I just sound like Barbosa. I mean, thought I had to make that fucking change because I was so disappointed in the bloody spelling. And I... You'd best start believing in ghost stories, <laughs> Miss Turner. You're in one! <laughs> Put it away, Ed. Put it away. <laughs> so I, I created a second email address with which was Caribbean Fantasy spelled correctly. Um, and it was a bit difficult managing two inboxes actually at that time, or maybe five inboxes. Which, <laughs> of course, all of that, all of that traffic coming through from those ladies. What, um, <laughs> what email platform were you on? More importantly. Oh, I, I was a Hotmail kid. You were on Hotmail? In the early in the early days, what were you? Well, so this is what I actually wanted to discuss was, you know, what your email platform says about you. Because I think there is now at least certainly a, a set of attributes that we would ascribe to the different email platforms. So back in the day, I was on Hotmail myself, um, which I think if you're if you're still on Hotmail, though... You... Yeah, I raise I raise at least one of my eyebrows to that. Yeah, if you're still on Hotmail, you've you've probably got spyware issues. Um, you're probably still using a Dell, you know. Yeah, you're on Windows 2008. By the way, what do you call a laptop that can sing really well? Um, a Dell. Nice. <laughs> in terms of oh, in terms of the other platforms, I think. Well, so my family was always on AOL, America Online. Because we used to live in America, and so we had an AOL address, which is still maintained to this very day, despite the fact that AOL has become basically a defunct branch of the Time Warner company, I think. And I do think that you know the sort of person that uses AOL still is someone who's they're, they're kind of printing out an email to bring it over to your house. You know, they're <laughs> they're ringing up IT and saying, yeah. but they've still got that. Don't print your emails tag at the bottom of their, of their signature. Yeah, exactly. You know, that little recycle thing. Yeah, yeah. They probably say things like, oh, I came across this great new website. Um, get a pen to jot this down. And you're like, okay, they'll just say the name. And then they go, yeah, so it's uh, HTTP um, uh, forward slash forward slash <laughs> www dot uh, pets at home dot com. And uh, that's your AOL customer, I think. Um, yes. Speaking of which, actually, www is an example of an acronym where it's actually faster to say the underlying words wow. than it is. World Wide Web. Yeah. So actually... That's really interesting. You should just say worldwideweb.google.com. That's actually blown my mind. I think a, a bunch of our listeners will be with me in, in having our mind blown mm. by that. Another one is, of course, VW. It's actually quicker to say Volkswagen. Yeah, Volkswagen, yeah. yeah. Du bist, uh, du bist wahr. And don't ask us about our emissions because they are absolutely in order. Yeah, <laughs> naughty. Alles in Ordnung. Yeah, alles in Ordnung, yeah. naughty Volkswagen. Um, but what, oh, yes, what else yeah. have we got? So if I was to suggest Gmail to you, what does that tell you about the person, do you think? Interesting. Well, you know, this is actually a, a good opportunity for me to, to reveal a bit of my my recent meanderings in the world of email because i think gmail is obviously the, the kind of let's say gold standard of emails mm -hmm. now in a in a big list of 25 email addresses you know let's say on a on a big email chain the gmails yeah that's your solid kind of you know your bread and butter and then you actually notice the aols because mm -hmm. they are the exception to the rule so what i actually funny enough what today happened was totally separately to researching or preparing for this episode, I I was just in a bit of a weird mood, and I I thought I would s try to send an email to the person whoever they are who owns the email address laszlo at gmail dot com because oh, nice. I, I, so I just wanted to connect, you know, with a fellow Laszlo, um, and also just congratulate them for having this uh, special 
email address name. And this relates to my obsession for email address names. That would be a massive flex, actually. If you, well, Lazo's a yeah. weird name, so it's not that much of a flex. Ed but at gmail.com. Ed at gmail.com. It would be like, oh, what, does he bloody own the company or something? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I kept the email pretty simple to my fellow Laszlo. I just said, hi, Laszlo. Not much more to this email than saying hi from one Laszlo to another. <laughs> I'm a bit jealous you got the Laszlo at gmail.com, but I'll, I guess I'll just have to live with that. Hope you're well. Laszlo. But hang on, which of your email addresses did you send this from? Does it did you send this from Laszlo1992 <laughs> at Gmail or I did I did not thanks for revealing my birth year. <laughs> um, I, I didn't I didn't send it from Caribbean Fantasy, I'll tell you that for free. I sent it from my personal email address, which includes my name, Laszlo. Mm-hmm. Obviously I wanted to show him that I'm a legit, a legit Laszlo. Laszlo. Not one of these fake Laszlo's, you know, floating around mm. the internet these days. But I was very, very excited to receive a bounce back from this email. A boomerang. A boomerang. And I'll tell you why I was excited. I got an an address not found email. And this is exciting to me because I thought... Let me get on that. Let me get on that. Exactly. So the next two hours was basically (laughs) a manhunt that I went down. And I'm not exaggerating. It was literally two hours. This, like this treasure hunt to try and somehow create the email address laszlo at gmail.com. Now, the issue is that you can't create an email address now on Gmail, which is less than six characters long. Ah, oh, so it's been lost forever. So it, I think it's been lost forever, but but then what do I do? Obviously, I turn to Gmail support. I turn to Google support mm. because this this case needs to be escalated and I need to find some way. This needs to go right up to the top. This needs to get Eric Schmidt. Right at the top, exactly. So I open up a chat with with Rose. Rose is my Google chat support officer and she is going to prove to be a real hero in the next two hours. Um, spoiler alert, I don't actually end up getting lazo.gmail.com. I just want to say that very honestly up front because if you had expectations, mm-hmm. I didn't. But God, did I try. And I was really buoyed by the fact that Rose... Having heard my request, she she was really taking it seriously. She said, uh, Dear Laszlo, I understand the importance of your concern. And just to set expectation, <laughs> we are specialized for Google One storage management. She's also kind of letting me know that this is actually not in her remit at all. And that I've contacted the You're through to absolutely person. the wrong place, Laszlo. <laughs> and I'm very, very appreciative of your concern. Yeah, yeah. but I, 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 I dialed up the, uh, the sycophant in me, the... the the really kind of like I sucked up to Rose basically. I said, Rose, this would be a game changer for me if I could create that email address with your help. Yes. Winky face. Winky face. Winky face? That's a bit suggestive. I had it. <laughs> it's not suggestive. I just, I wanted Rose to know that I really appreciated her help and that this. You're suddenly buddy Leo DiCaprio on the Titanic trying to seduce her. <laughs> But she, she was she was really on my team. She said, no worries, we can work on this together to make it possible. And I was thinking, wow, thanks. She's she's, she's, she's really leading you on there a lot. I mean, she doesn't I, I know think that she, she can do this, does she? She, she, she? she led me on a lot in this interchange, I won't lie. But but then again, I was I was being uh, quite flirtatious in my support queries. I said, <laughs> I said, thanks. Curious to hear how we can make it possible. So, you know, I've, I'm continuing to kind of be like, oh, okay, we can make it possible, but... Let me, you know, put your money where your mm. mouth is, Rose. And then and then she sent something quite unexpected, which definitely wasn't an automatic Google reply. She said, your idea is brilliant, and I really <laughs> want to help you with this. <laughs> it's as if you've just invented electricity or something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And um, as soon as she said my idea was brilliant, I was thinking like, whoa, h- hang on a second. This is, um, she, she really... You know, she really clearly appreciates what I'm doing here. So I sent her a message saying, thanks so much, Rose. That sounds really promising. And I really appreciate you believing in my vision. There's a lot of appreciation going on here, mate. Just get a room. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole load of appreciation. And, you know, I, I needed to appreciate what Rose was doing. So she, she then goes away for literally 15 minutes and sends me regular updates being like, I'm sorry, I'm just really talking to people about this. It's a, you know, a complicated issue. And I'm thinking... This, you know, I think actually I, I might be on course to get Laszlo at gmail.com. Which would be a huge win, and to be fair. A huge win. And she keeps on she keeps on leaving these bloody breadcrumbs, yeah. like for, for Hansel. She keeps on saying, I also have Google account, and what you want is amazing suggestion. And I'm thinking, God, this, you know, Rose believes in, in the mission. Unfortunately, after this very long correspondence, and I think it lasted at least an hour, 
of me and Rose going back and forth. And this is uh, this is company time that Rose has been using <laughs> to deal with my my utterly unreasonable request. After this hour, she reveals to me that unfortunately it would not be possible, but that she would definitely raise this issue with the engineers <laughs> and and that and that they take customer feedback very seriously. So she was sure there was a good chance this feature would be put in place. And by the way, obviously subtext here. Clearly, they're not going to introduce five character names yeah. uh, in in any world, not least because uh, a guy, a bloke called Laszlo, wants his own his own email address. But I I, I said to Rose, I said. Rose, I really appreciate your help today. It might not have worked out exactly as we wanted. Ha ha. Oh. Nevertheless. That's a bit. No, I was just... Are you trying to keep it playful? Keep it playful, exactly. And and then her last, her parting comment to me was something that just left me on a really nice note. She just said, we will work this together to have better Google. And, you know, this story hasn't yet ended. I just wanted to provide an insight into my into my mission today to try and create lasso at gmail.com. I had to, I had to settle with a different, I, I was so infuriated by not actually succeeding that I found this new email service called Hey.com, uh, which is this kind of new base camp led email provider. And they had the domain, they had the email address name Laszlo at Hey.com available. So I, I am now Laszlo at Hey.com. If anyone wants to send me an email, my first email, Please ping me at uh, lasdo at hey.com. That's H E Y, is it? Or... That's H E Y dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! At this point, I think it would be appropriate for me to announce that I have actually carried out a hostile takeover of everybody's favourite segment. And in oh, fact, God. yes, this week, Captain Barbosa, aka Ed, <laughs> We'll be taking over the listicle segment, and I'm going to be inverting the norm and actually proposing a listicle for Laszlo. Um, God. Yeah, list- guy, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's a bloody amateur. He doesn't. He, he's not. A, he's not qualified for this. I'm nervous. Go to on, be man. honest, I am Go nervous. On, but Go this on. week's listicle, God, it's exciting, is called "What Your Email Sign Off Says About You." Uh, <laughs> and this is a vice listicle vice oh edgy and we are going to be discussing what each of these say about you as a person and we're then to splice as we often do with our own experiences and we can discuss which ones we use but laszlo i will kick you off it's a long list but i'm going to start with just a couple so, so first up we have sincerely Oh, I mean, sincerely, Jesus! What is it your grandma responding yeah. to you on, <laughs> on the on 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 the on the company email? No, yeah, sincerely is actually it's classic. It's the kind of weathered fifty-six-year-old CEO who you know is um is still sending faxes to people. Firstly, and secondly, you know, a message to the intern like, uh, uh, "Dear Patrick, would you mind picking up some coffee on your way back from the supermarket?" Sincerely, Jonathan. You know, this one is very much that you've you know you've travelled in time from from yes. nineteen oh five forward to twenty twenty, and you've left your kind of horse and yeah. cart at the door, and yeah. you're saying, yeah, yes. or, or it's uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, or it's the uh, the over over polite job applicant i would yes. say kind of like dear miss hawkins i am <laughs> enclosed you will find my curriculum yeah. vitae here with <laughs> here with you shall find <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah yeah uh, i look forward to hearing back about the aforementioned mm. p- p- potential job opening yes sincerely uh, bumbleton bumblefluff yes and uh <laughs> As per my previous email, as dated per. 20th of September, <laughs> I would like to, yeah, as per the below, or as the aforementioned would attest, yeah, come on, mate, Jesus, what are you, Scrooge McDuff or something? It was Dickens. Dickens, of course, would have used words like these because he was paid by the word um, for his columns. <laughs> yeah, but that's why he's, right he's, he's very verbose, Dickens. But mm-hmm. exactly, so sincerely is in that, that ilk, that category, in the same category as to whom it may concern or to Classic. to whomever i mean come on we all know Classic, that you know when you're yeah. using who I as mean, the look, direct object of a also, sentence it's whom <laughs> come on lads also also you know i understand saying to whom it may concern back in the what 
80s, 90s when you literally didn't know who the person yeah. was at the top of the company. <laughs> We've got LinkedIn, guys. Like, we literally have LinkedIn. Yeah. You know that they're called bloody, you know, Stuart McCanny. We know who it concerns. It concerns it, it con- Laszlo yeah. at gmail.com. That's why you're emailing yeah. him. <laughs> oh, okay. if only. Very good. So that's pretty on point, I would say, as well. I'll give you a full point for that. Next up, we have Cheers. <laughs> oh, I love it. And to be honest, you even... You know, your delivery was uh, mm. was was almost too faithful to the to the exact tone oh, I gave in which away. I imagine it says. That's because I love this yeah. one. Cheers is classic. It's kind of like uh, he, you know, this person will actually not even start the email with hi or hello. It'd just be like Dave. Yeah, great to see you the other day. It's like Dave, yeah. comma, great. To see you. It's all in one line. It's all in one line. By the way, there's no, there's no um, punctuation. There's no, there's no spacing. Uh, Dave, great to see you the other day. Um, just so you know, I have forwarded the complaint to our client, uh, and uh, please do send me the invoice for the uh, for the the shipment. Cheers, Mike. Yeah, it's exactly. All in, exactly. Just, it's all in one line. It's kind of your over familiar colleague who, yeah. you know, I mean, in this case, Dave is literally his superior. You know, yeah. he, Dave. Dave is the person who gives him work. So the way that Vice have described this, which I think is pretty on point, is. If you successfully pull this off, you give the impression to everyone that you email that you're incredibly affable and enjoy pubs. There's also a good chance you give email-related anxiety to people who know they can't and never will make cheers work. <laughs> yes, and I think it's exactly. just so good because it's like, hey, Terry, cheers, yeah, see you at the pub keys. Oh, exactly. It's the sort of guy, he's, he's around about the office, he's a bit cheeky to the, you know, sue from accounts or, or somebody at the reception yep he bloody loves to get their beers in at the after work drinks uh... he, he's 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 the he's the the leader of after work drinks he's the yeah. alpha of of setting up after work drinks yeah um exactly. and it's very funny because you were talking about the people who are given anxiety at knowing that they'll never be able to pull this off it reminds me of a great quote i, I saw the other day by uh, this this journalist i follow who wrote I spend a lot of time deciding which sentence in the email is going to have to take one for the team with the exclamation point. Yes. <laughs> which is such a great way of, of putting this, you know, um, you don't want to come across as, you know, sycophantic or overly excited in emails. You've got, and, and I think people really do overuse exclamation marks when it comes to email. Like, Hi, Mark, exclamation mark. Thanks for the coffee, exclamation mark. Let's catch up next week. Exactly. It's a bit like what I would term emoji inflation whereby oh. you don't want to come across as being rude and so and you yeah. don't want to be misread because reading communication can be very different to oral of course you can gauge so much from tone but there's no tone in email or in text so in order to not come across as a blunt dickhead you will add on a peppering of exclamation marks or a bunch of emojis. Indeed, it, it might be worth Earth calling as a team, considering doing a, an episode on emojis themselves. Mm, mm, we should. So this next one up, I think, is is a classic. And it is nothing but your lowercase name. So email <laughs> and then full stop Laszlo in lowercase. And the entire email is probably in lowercase without a greeting. That's funny. That's funny. So I think this. I need me, those documents so... by Monday, Laszlo. Yeah. So this is the dickhead boss, isn't it? It's got. It's got to be the dickhead boss. You know, we we talked about the kind of old stuck in the past boss who's doing sincerely. I think this one's a classic kind of you know young startup founder who isn't. Think of uh, what's his name, Tra- Travis Kalanick, the yeah, Uber Kalanick. guy. Yeah, yeah. Is is that his name? Yeah. yeah. You can just imagine him. Just he's a bit of an arsehole, basically. But he's... you can just imagine. Him. He's busy. Yeah. yeah. He, he's busy. He's He's got no time for this. You know, he can't do whatever. his he, his phone for some reason doesn't have the auto caps lock. It's fine. You know, <laughs> he has to he's got to get it out. No, more, more like he's actually had to disable the auto yeah, caps lock exactly. to, to, to continue his, his self-perpetuating yeah. dream of how busy he is. But yeah, it's quite right. The, the shift button is slowing you down on your way up the corporate ladder. And therefore, you know that the only way that you can keep that dream alive is to drop the lowercase sign off. I mean, it's just a bit confusing when when my dad is doing that in our family emails. Mm. You know, it's kind of like, all right, dad, you know, embroider it a bit at least. But he's just like, no, Rupert. He's a busy man. You're very busy. And then next up, we have best. So oh, I mean, blah, 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 yeah. best. Laszlo. Well, I need to I need to kick off by saying that I am definitely in the best camp. I am mm. I am a 
I am a, a best sign offer. I think best is just, I think it must be the majority of, of email sign offs. It's just so easy. It still, it still feels quite, you know, concise, mm-hmm. but ultimately it's lost all meaning. Like what the hell are you saying? Best? Like best <laughs> what? Best what? Best, well, of course, email? traditionally short for all the best, I believe. I believe differently. I believe it's short for best wishes or best regards. Oh, okay. Best regards. I've never heard that. Okay. This is actually really funny because Russians say best regards a lot. And I, when I was teaching English in Russia, I told them not to say best regards because no one actually writes that. Mm, mm. But I think it's based on some kind of antiquated writing. But yeah, I, I, I'm definitely a best man. It's so convenient. So easy. Yes. So I would say that I am also, I will reveal that I'm also a best guy. So we're we're best we're besties. Uh, the we're besties, oh, best men, besties. <laughs> and the Vice article explains us as being: you knew you couldn't pull off cheers, <laughs> but <laughs> sincerely sounded weirdly stiff. So you settled on this as the ironically next best solution. Sometimes you reflect on the fact that you don't wish the literal best to every person you email, and you feel like a bit of a fraud. How many people will you lie to this week, and when will the madness end? Wow, that's scathing. I think that's kind of quite accurate, though. That is a bit how I feel. Like, I, I don't think I can get away with cheers. I'd love to be any other pub with the lads. Cheers, boys. But cheers. I'm not. So I have to just yeah. I have to settle for best, which is quite weak, to be honest, isn't it? Also, I, I like the fact that they've said you settle on the ironically next best solution because I often will be writing an email and sometimes I will have said the word best in the email where I'll say, oh, oh no. and I think that would be the best option we have available to us. And then I have to s- stop and go, well, I can't go best option available to us, best Ed. And I then change I'll say, the, to, the most to, optimal, to worst. The most optimal <laughs> option. <laughs> the most fruitful option yeah. best ed best yeah i it really is just a matter of of convenience i think it's just you know th- th- that's four letters then you're done and, and it's and it's been vaguely polite and vaguely formal well that is all we've got time for this week but as ever earth callers please do give us a download on spotify a rating and maybe even a review on apple podcasts and slide on over to our dms on instagram should you wish to suggest any revolutionary content we can be found at earth underscore calling underscore pod Yes, and please, as usual, do join us next week when we will be exploring the hottest thing to come out of Silicon Valley since silicon itself. The multi-billion dollars... Silicon did not come out of Silicon Valley. Let's just, yeah, fact check that. We will be exploring the multi-billion dollar audio rooms app called Clubhouse. And excitingly, we hope that this will be the first episode to actually involve you, our listeners. So really hope to catch you all then. But in the meantime, Earth out.